The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Nodulator Pro, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Joining in by Albert Tenuta on the Soybean School, Omafra's a plant pathologist. Albert, I want to talk a little bit about white mold. Uh, it's been yeah. one of those years. People think that this was, sh if there ever was a year that was a white mold year, this would be it. How are things shaping up? Oh, no, we're definitely seeing white mold in, in large areas of the province and that. Now, the weather's been great for, for those areas. You know, where we are down here in Ridgetown and into southwestern Ontario, Essex, Kent, and that, it's been hot, it's been drier. Um, not those frequent rains. So we're just starting to pick up some mold in certain like, locations and that. But again, very little uh, mold down here as of yet. Uh, other areas that have had these frequent rain showers, storms, Eastern Ontario into the areas around London, north of London and that, definitely seeing white mold and it's been seeing white mold for, for a while as well. So it has, you know, today's a perfect day. Temperatures are moderate, we've got overcast, you know, it's still damp in here. All of those are ideal for mold. You know, I hear a lot of uh, growers talking about, hey, you know, can I still mm. put on a white mold fungicide? You know, timing is 2.5, but we're at R4, R5. Is it worth a shot? Yeah, so even that timing, you know, the 2.5 that we talk about or have been talking about in the past for general leaf disease control and, and, and that side of things, that may work for some of the foliar leaf diseases um, on, on those. But when we think about white mold, totally different strategy here. You're looking at earlier the better, those blossoms, those flowers that are developing on the plant, those are the key driver for, for white mold. Those apothecia, those little um, sclerotia that are, are buried in the ground or you see them, they're black, they almost look like rat turds, many growers see, and then you get a little mushroom coming out of those spores that are released go and uh, infect those blossoms. And those blossoms is how the disease starts to develop. And so as you start getting flowers at R1, R1 and a half, that's where the first application would be probably most beneficial and has been most beneficial because you're starting to, you're slowing down that initial infection. And then if needed, say in a year like this or under um, very high um, risk factors, high plant populations, narrow rows, high fertility, all of the good growth, all of that can increase your risk for mold as well. History of white mold in those fields and then a subsequent application in that R3, maybe a little bit later than that application could would would be helpful in those cases. Um, one of the questions, and we talked about this earlier, um, growers coming in wanting to go at R4, R5, they see the mold there, it's down low, it's infected, started to gurgle that stem, coming in with a fungicide application at that stage, really, you know, it, it may make you feel well, make you feel good, sleep better at night, but in most cases you've wasted your money in that particular case because, think about it, where's that disease developing? It's down low. And so as we try to um, you apply that fungicide at those late stages like that, it's not getting down there in the first place. And the disease still develops down there, it's still going to pinch off those stems and, and in many cases kill that stem. So it's really not going to increase uh, um, yield in that particular case. It might green up the top part of the, the canopy, but overall the, the return on investment is just not there in that case. And we've seen that you know, you know, in 2013 or so, where you know, a few years ago, where we had again another white mold year, where those, you know, many will call them revenge sprays, were applied. And sure, you saw a little bit green on top, but it really didn't pay. There was no benefit at the end on those. <laughs>